it's being recorded. Yay! <laughs> It's great when you can enjoy the little things in life. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it's recording then. Yes. Well, we are going to start then. Yes. Okay? Yes. <laughs> I'm excited. <clears throat> good. Good. All right. Here we go. Hi, I'm Faster EFT practitioner Kim Brown. Glad you could join me today. And with us also today is Dr. Alana Eckstein Michelson, a level four faster EFT practitioner in Israel. Welcome, Alana. Thank you. I'm really honored that you asked me to talk on your show or to interview me. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Alana, what have you found to be the most difficult concept of faster EFT for your clients to understand? I will say that the most difficult concept is that faster EFT is not just like antibiotics, that you take it and you're done with your problem and that's that. <laughs> faster EFT is a way of life. It's a new concept of the way you deal with things. And what people don't seem to understand is they come to me with a certain problem. I mean, recently I've had quite a few clients come to me with long-term illnesses. When I say long-term, I'm talking about 15, 20 years illnesses. Now, in my opinion, a 15-year, 20-year illness, the illness is not the problem, okay? The illness is your coping skill. Now, it doesn't seem like a very good coping skill because no one wants to be sick and no one wants to, you know, be at home in right. bed all the time. But at the same time, somewhere along the way, somewhere in their past, they learn that if they're sick, they, don't, they can get out of doing things, things that they don't want to do, things they don't want to deal with, whatever it is that they don't want, they can get out of it. Now, what happens is, is that they use it as their coping skill. I can go back and I can get rid of whatever their problem was, you know, take them back in their memories and clear out the memories and clean it out and they no longer have that anymore. But their body has already come to a certain point where this is their habit and we're all creatures of habit. So what happens is, is for a while they're good and then suddenly it starts coming back again. And they come to me and they go, I don't understand why it's coming back again. And it's not that it's coming back again because you're ill, it's coming back again because you didn't change the way you deal with life, the way you deal with all the stimuli that comes up in your life. If you learn better coping skills of how to deal with what your, comes up in life, because things come up in life all the time, till the day you sure die. Do. You'll, you know, till the day you die, you're gonna have to deal with things that come up. So if you can change the way that you deal with it, then you won't have to go back to being sick anymore. You'll have a better coping skill. So people look at the illness as the problem, but the illness really isn't the problem. I mean, it isn't, it isn't. It's a problem in that it's their habit to what they're doing and they have to change their habit. And that's a concept which many people actually don't come to me because of that, because they say to me, oh, I have OCD. Can you get rid of my OCD? And I said, well, I can get rid of your OCD, but you'll have to continue doing the tapping afterwards. He goes, what, you mean I can't just finish with it? That's it? I'm like, <laughs> well, you can, but then you'll have to come back to me again. So it's a difficult concept to understand. And interestingly enough, as I was talking with a friend of mine who's another practitioner, most of the people who come out and say they've gotten over their serious illnesses with faster EFT are people who are now level four practitioners who are tapping for years and years, who are constantly tapping on themselves. And if you ask them, they say it as well. Every time something comes up, I tap. I don't let it sit over there. I don't let myself go back to the old way of thinking. And Robert says it in his addiction protocol. He says, what are you going to do instead of doing whatever that addiction is? And then he says, you tap. What are you going to do instead of it? Then you tap. So you're, you have to replace your coping skill with a better one that will serve you well as opposed to serve you badly. It's your right. choice. Yeah. So when Robert has a video where he has worked on someone in a seminar mm -hmm. and... It, it appears everything is gone. Right. When they go home, what have they entered again? If they don't continue with the tapping, then they'll go right back to where they were beforehand. And then they'll say, oh, it didn't work. Because it's a way of life. It's, it's like an emotional toothbrush. You don't brush your teeth once and three months later get a cavity and say, but I don't understand. I brushed my teeth then. Why am I getting a cavity now? 
You don't take a shower once and then three months later when you're <laughs> smelly and dirty and disgusting and say, but I took a shower three months ago. <laughs> you take a shower every single day or every two days, or I'm not going to tell people what they have to do, but the longer you wait, the dirtier you're going to get. That's the way it goes. That's just, you know, a fact of life. <laughs> so there's something about the practice and developing the habit. Right. Absolutely. That is essential. Absolutely. No question about that. Now, the interesting thing is, is I give what's called a yearly subscription where I give reduced rate sessions and you sign up for 52 sessions. That's one session a year, maybe let's say 50 sessions. I allow myself two weeks of vacation during the year. But what it does is, is it ha you're working with someone who every week is on your back and saying, have you been tapping? Have you been doing the the um, happiness journal? Have you been doing the, you know, whatever other new things you need to install inside of yourself to become a better version of yourself and be able to lead a better life that you want to lead? And the interesting thing that I notice is that the first 20 to 30 sessions, I would say, people are constantly contacting me in the middle of the week and saying, but this and this happened and this and this happened and I went into my anxiety attack and I had this and I had that. By the time they're past the 30th week, they're not doing that anymore. And instead, when they come, they say, well, I had that, but I tapped it away. Well, that happened, but I tapped it away. But that happened, and I tapped it away. Because they're already installed, they've already started installing themselves the new habit. And if they continue doing it after they finish with me, then it'll last them for a whole lifetime. It's sort of like New Year resolutions. Because New Year resolutions, yeah. you make them, and you start off really strong, and come four weeks in, five weeks in, they start to wane a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> little power just doesn't hold out. But when you install it as a new habit, then it holds out. I do it automatically. I don't even think about it anymore when I do it. And I imagine your clients who have taken your yearly subscription yeah. by the end of that year do as well. Absolutely. I mean, I, not only that, but I have them telling me, oh, don't worry about that. I'll just tap that out later. Don't worry about that. I'll tap that out later. <laughs> So you said earlier, one session a year, you meant one session a week, right? One session a week every, yes. for the whole year. For the whole year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a mistake if I said it that way. I meant one session a week for the whole year, right. minus right. two weeks, we'll say, for vacation. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. And it gives you three things. I mean, it's the same thing. When you go to the gym, you don't go to the gym once, and then three months later say, I don't understand why am I fat again? You go to the gym every week. No one says, no one thinks twice about that. So this is sort of like a gym for your mind, a gym for your, and many of my clients decide they just want to continue because if they would tap with me during every week, they don't have to tap quite as much when they're by themselves. And that's fine. The same way that you pay the gym instead of doing exercise at home. I do exercise at home. I don't go to a gym. But people who want to use the equipment of the gym, they pay the money and they go to the gym. There's no, not mm -hmm. much difference of it there. People look at it differently, but there really isn't much difference. It's doing gymnastics for your mind or gymnastics for your body. <laughs> Very good. And I imagine you've probably had some clients who at the end of that year, maybe you've reminded them of this thing that they used to do when that thing happened and they go, I forgot. I yes. used to do that. Wow. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that doesn't bother me anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I that says like, I didn't think about that for months. Wow. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll just tap it out later if it comes back. Don't worry. <laughs> but they're installing the new habit. And as we are creatures of habit, once they have that new habit installed in, they'll continue using it. So when Robert does it in the seminar, and he fixes them, you know, fixes them. He did fix the actual problem at that point, but he didn't have the chance or the time to install a new habit because that takes time. Right. No one can do it within one 20 minute session, install a new habit that will last them for a whole lifetime if the person themselves are not motivated to do it on their own. But the fact that they've joined in for a whole year means that they're motivated and that's already a big head start. Yes. And the fact that I'm over there telling them constantly, did you tap? Did you tap? Did you tap? As a constant reminder, that's the next step. It creates the habit. And not only that, but while I'm with them doing it once a week, 
I basically let them sometimes do the tapping where I'm just standing back guiding and making sure that they're doing it on track. Because when you do it by yourself, there's also a certain way of doing it. People like to go right into the, you know, the real meaty stuff, the thing that's a 10 and start tapping on themselves and it doesn't work. And then they say it works for everybody else besides me. Mm -hmm. And I tell people over and over again, don't start with a 10, start with a one build up confidence in the system. Your unconscious, what it does is, if you go straight to a 10 and it doesn't work, it'll say, ah, that system doesn't work, not worth trying. Right. If you do it with a one and it says, oh, look at that, that worked. And you do it with a two and that worked too. And then you do it with a three, that worked too. By the time you get to the 10, it'll be like a one. Because system work. And that's another thing that I found with my yearly, my yearly subscription clients is that by the time we get to the, you know, the 30th, 40th week, things are going like this. We do one round of tapping and it's gone already. While at the beginning, when they first started, I might've had to do 10 rounds before something would, would move and they would feel the relief. And that's part of the habit as well. You've exactly. trained your mind. Exactly. And your unconscious got, how do you say, expects a confidence in the system? Yes. And it now we'll use it without any problem. It becomes one of the unconscious habits of the unconscious mind when you do it like that. And oddly enough, that's how the thing we don't want was installed as well, exactly. was through habit, right? Exactly, because it was a one-time learning at that point when you were really little, and one-time learnings when you're little are much stronger than one-time learnings when you're older. Sure. And your, your unconscious learned, hey, when you're sick, you don't have to do your homework. Great. Let's try if we can do it in other things, too. Or when you're sick, mommy stays home with you instead of going to work. And right. you get that special time with her. And people might bring you presents when you're sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it's that learning. And then your unconscious mind says, oh, great. Let's try it on this. Let's try it on that. Let's try it on that. And, you know, as you're growing up, it works, 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 works. When you get to be older, it might not work quite as well for you anymore. But... You already have that habit. It's yeah. already stuck there. So absolutely, I, I, that's one of the concepts that's really hard for my clients to get. But when they do get it, their whole life changes. Their whole life changes. And you can ask any of my yearly subscription people how their life has changed from A to Z throughout the year. Yeah, I think that's a marvelous um, thing to offer, that yearly subscription. But tell us, too, about the videos that you make with clients showing oh, yes. a healing journey. Right. So it all started from people would say they saw Robert do 20 minutes and it's done and they can't get that. And I want to show people what a real healing journey is like, because in 20 minutes, you can usually do a memory. In 20 minutes, you can get rid of a little thing, not install a new habit, but get rid of a little thing, too. But when you come with those big things, 20 minutes is not going to heal that whole big thing. And usually Robert even says, I'm going to let one of my other practitioners continue to work with you because right now we don't have the time to do it. Okay, so you see like one little instance over there, but you don't see the full picture. With the healing journeys, there's three things involved. Number one is that I want to give back to people who, what people gave to me because I was at one point in my life at a point where I had no money and I needed help and people reached out to me. Number two is that I want people to get an idea of what a real healing journey is like, not just the person who's getting the healing journey, but anybody who watches the video. Mm -hmm. And number three is that if people work together with the video, they'll get healing too. So it's, you know, threefold. And of course I get publicity from it, but that's fine because people who see my style and like my style will then come to me, mm -hmm. which is what should be, because I'd rather have people who like my style come to me than people who don't like my style and then say, well, this stuff doesn't work. <laughs> Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I do these interviews is because I want people to know I'm not the only person out there. Robert's not the only person out there doing faster EFT. Right. There are people all over the world and you will um, feel like you can work with one of these people. You and feel when alignment. you feel that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when that happens, you will receive more changes than right. someone you're resisting to start with. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. So I now have something like at least 10 of these healing journeys where each one is between five to 10 sessions long. 
you can follow along you know sometimes i look at it as some sort of not really a soap opera i would say but you follow along the story with the people like you see the changes occurring as and some of them the changes are amazing you know they come from a place where they were single and then suddenly they moved in with their boyfriend and you know now they're working on the issues with their boyfriend you see like real changes in the life even within those 10 sessions so i think it's an amazing idea which is why i do it and the people you know people come to me they want to get yeah. the a lot of people who need the help want the help can't afford the help and this is a way that they can do it while still paying to other people paying it over um from what they got so yes i think it's a wonderful idea and thank you for doing it thank you oh, my pleasure my pleasure and the truth is i get a lot of the sessions too I learn a lot from the sessions and I, you know, I'm addicted to the sessions. We'll say it like that. It's where mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in my good place, my, you know, connected to source. So. Yeah. So in your own life, Alana, what has been the biggest change for you since you have found Faster FT? Well, aside from the fact that I was able to find my passion, I was able to work from home when I needed my to be home for my kids because I'm a single mom for six kids and even though now they're older but I still wouldn't want a 13 year old to be home all alone for eight hours a day when he's sick and that's what my youngest is right now so I'm home with him and even though I'm working you know in between hours I still have time to spend with him as well in between the hours when he's at home and not feeling well or now during a vacation but I think the biggest thing was I got control over my life mm -hmm. I was I've learned how to be able to take my feelings and direct them in the right places so that I can get the most out of it. So that is power, isn't it? That is total power, total power. And not only that, but I've learned how to do it in a way where I don't feel anger about it. I don't feel, you know, if someone comes to me and wants me to do something that I don't want to do, if I would used to get angry and hang up the phone and start yelling, <laughs> now I just say, I don't have a problem with this. This is what I do. This is what's good for me. If it's not good for you, great. If it's not good for you, then we'll have to come to some other, you know, decision together, which is a much better place to be. And just the other day was interesting. I came home and two of my children were fighting. And when I say fighting, you can imagine the worst. I'm not going to go into any details over here. <laughs> and my first reaction was I came in and for literally five seconds, I yelled and I looked at myself and I said, wait a second, what am I doing here? And I shut up. I looked at one, I said, you go back to that room, you go back to that room. I went outside, I tapped for two minutes, got rid of anything that I was feeling inside, came back in, turned on the air conditioner. That was the end of it. In the past, it would have been, you know, an hour of yelling, her yelling, his yelling, my yelling, all of us yelling, all of us fighting, all of us feeling bad. And then me going up to my room, feeling all bad that I was yelling at them. And here I was able to just cut it in, you know, nip it in the bud, go out, tap it out. And that was the end. So that's a much better place to be. <laughs> Absolutely. So even being a practitioner, you wouldn't call yourself fixed yet, would you? It's not a question of being fixed. It's a question of life throws things at you. It yeah. always does. And what I tell my clients is when you have the big things thrown at you. And we all know that big things are thrown at you sometimes. And my friend just found out that she had breast cancer. That's a 10. You don't have any time to start with the one over there. It just hits you right in the face of the 10. And I say, then come to me, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. But when you have all those little things, if you let them go, what people have a tendency of saying is, oh, well, that's okay. I don't have to worry about that. It's not so terrible. Oh, it goes up to two. It's still not so, I can deal with it. It's not so terrible. It goes up to the three. Well, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but okay, I can still deal with it. It goes up to a four. It's a little bit less comfortable, but I don't have time right now. I have to go cook dinner. I have to go get the, pick up this one. That suddenly goes up to 10. It's like, oh no, what am I gonna do? I can't do this. I can't deal with my kids again. And then they call me up in a hall of hysterics. Okay, deal with it when it's a one. It will take you literally half a minute and it'll be done. You won't even remember what you were tapping on. I mean, that's the greatest for me when you know something triggers me in the street or when I'm driving and I tap for literally two rounds and then like, what was I tapping on? can't even remember anymore. Okay. So I don't mind if you don't want to do that. I get more money. <laughs> Good for me. <laughs> but, so it's not that I have to do this the rest of my life, but I actually get to do this. Exactly. For the rest of my life. 
exactly. You get to empower yourself for the rest of your yeah. life. And that's an amazing thing. It sure is. It means that you have control over when you're going to get upset, when you're not going to get upset, and when you do get upset, how to get rid of it in the fastest, easiest possible way, which most Yay. people don't know how to do. <laughs> no, it's, you made me mad. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> exactly. It's all you. It's all you doing it to me. <laughs> right. So as I tell, you know, if I was going to say one word to everybody, which is why I would tell all my, I do tell all my clients all the time, use it. If you don't use it, it's not going to work and I'll be richer. If you do use it, <laughs> you'll be richer and you'll be self-empowered. And when there's a 10, that doesn't mean you, it's a, it, there's no shame in going to a practitioner for help. Mm -hmm. I have a practitioner, a tapping buddy, which for the past five years, we've been meeting every single week. One week I work on her, she weeks, one week she works on me. One week I work on her, one week she works on me. There's nothing wrong with going when big things come up, mm. but unless you want to spend your whole life with practitioners, you know, because you have to, not because you want to, tap, use it. You know, when you come to it, uh, most practitioners, the most practitioners that I know at least, they teach you how to use it on your own. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you if you want to use it or not. But if you don't, you'll just be making those practitioners richer. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, you'll become self-empowered. You'll become richer. You'll be able to help your children more. You'll be able to help your spouses more. You'll be able to live a happier life, you'll, you know. But if you don't want that, that's fine. <laughs> So other than use it, mm -hmm. if there was one message that you could share with everyone here today, what would that message be? Other than use it. Um, that's a hard one because that's one of the biggest ones that I have mm -hmm. is use it. I would say let go of all those things that are holding you back. The people who did it to you probably don't even remember that they did it anymore and it's still hurting you and you're still doing it to yourself over and over inside if you let it go it won't affect them anyway the other person because they don't even remember you doing it but it will change your whole life and that's and when I work with a client that's the only person who's important to me at that point when I'm working I'm in the moment with a client I want them to feel better I want them them to get to a good place so, you know, I tell them also, it's like, you know, right now we're not dealing with your husband. If you want your husband to come to me, I'll deal with him and then he'll be the main of my focus. Make him happy. Right now I'm making you happy. Mm -hmm. But if you don't let it go, you'll be tapping a heck of a lot more. Have a big headache afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> if you do let it go, things will start changing your life that you couldn't possibly imagine. And I've had cases where people, you know, who haven't talked to their son for five years we did one session on it you know changing everything that she held about it she calls me up the next week he called me up out of nowhere after five years of not talking to me he's called me up once you start letting these things go things in your life will just change i can't you know explain the metaphysics about it i just know that it happens it does. very so, good use it and let go of what you don't need <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for being with us today, Alana. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, listening to me, letting me share my stuff. <laughs> thank you. And I'll have Alana's information at the end of this video. Check out her YouTube healing journeys. Consider her yearly subscription. Remember, no matter what you've experienced in the past, today really is a new day. Yes, absolutely. See you next time. Thank you.